Hello, this is Christina Duke. I am making a video on how to make an insert mesh brush with poly paint. Uh, what I'm going to do is demonstrate it on this character, which is my model for a 3D print, and she is hopefully going to be done soon. Um, I just worked on a more higher detail feather and I wanted to replace these feather stand-ins that I made back then. Um, these stand-ins I actually made with the transpose tool, uh, duplicating and transposing, which was quite a bit hectic. So I realized I can make an insert mesh brush that I can duplicate around a lot faster by just drag and clicking. Um, an interesting thing though is I want to keep poly paint on it so that every single time I draw I'll get a new feather with the details on it, uh, painted details on it. So uh, what I did was make a new feather and this model. And what I want to make is a brush that retains the information of the color. That way when I draw it onto the mesh of this cookie witch is what I call her, um, it will duplicate it around. And this way I will have a good base color on the feather and then if I want to edit it uh, later by adding in a little variance that's not so symmetrical everywhere or duplicated everywhere. Um, I can do that but it's nice to have a good base from the beginning. So what I'm going to do is first I modeled the piece of course. I painted it like quickly because I don't need this back side. Um, I just want the front side of it since I'm only placing it on top of the cape. Um, and there are a couple methods of reducing the polys, mainly because if you're using it as an insert mesh brush, um, especially for this cape, I'm probably going to duplicate like 50 or so feathers. Um, that is just that would mean 50 times the active points that I have. So what I'm going to do is actually decimate it so that I reduce the amount of polys on it and it would make it a lot faster and easier to manage. So uh, first thing I'm going to do is decimate it down. Um, you can use the zero mesher tool if you plan to say export this to a production workflow like Maya. Um, that way you would have it a nice low poly UV piece um, and you could just place in that texture when you're in production so depends how you want to do it I'm just doing this for 3d print so I'm gonna do this the faster way which is staying in ZBrush um, one thing to keep in mind is when you're gonna decimate this since it has poly paint you want to turn on use and keep poly paint that way it will retain that information Next, you just pre-process it so that it calculates what it's going to decimate. And since this is already at 100k, I'm going to up this decimation to 50. Um, I did test that at 20, and 20 really crunched the topology. So I want to get as close as I can to it. Um, and so I'll decimate it here so that there's not too much shift in what's happening on the geo. Um, what I what happens is it triangulates the mesh, um, tries to keep the details that you have as best as possible, and uh, reduce the topology around the areas that are flatter or broader. So what that did was cut it by 50%, so now it's at 50k. Um, and from here, I'm just going to double check um, if I have UVs, and I'm pretty sure I don't. So. Uh, what I'm going to do is create a UV set for this, and I'll do that by doing polygroups, because um, UV Master has seemed to successfully work better when I polygroup the piece into sections that I want to cut up. So since this is two-sided, I'm going to actually just cut it in half and just mask off the back side. Uh, forget too that sometimes you have to turn on back face masking when masking it because it'll since these walls are so close to each other uh, it's gonna end up masking through the model like that 
Um, so I turn on back face mask and that's located in brush auto masking uh, back face mask. And of course I put it on my shelf over here so that I can easily click it. Um, so I will go ahead and mask all this off. And an important thing to do when polygrouping stuff like this is turn on polyframe. Um, sometimes you want to sharpen your mask because it won't reach certain areas uh, that you masked off, or it can leave like a, a gap or a hole if you didn't paint it um, fully with like 100% black or 100% uh, opacity. So I'm going to do that and I'm going to sharpen it by just hitting Control Alt and clicking on the mask. And you can't see too much difference, but it will sharpen it a bit. So, yeah, that's good enough. I just want two poly groups, one front, one back, and it's just going to automatically UV it. Um, if you are doing this for production, I recommend UVing it to the specifications of how you need to UV it for production. So, if you need certain shells to be cut exactly where the seams are, then you would need to do that in another program or you can do it in here as well but it might not be exactly what you need. So since it's UV, I'm gonna go ahead and turn polygroups on so that I can unwrap both of those and I'll just hit unwrap. So it's unwrapping two shells is what it says which is correct. And now my model should have UVs. And one way to check that is going into the texture map on the right and create. It should say, it should highlight all of these. That means it's our UVs. And you just hit new from polypaint. And so you have a feather with texture in the UV map. And I'm going to go ahead and now create the brush for it. So for insert mesh brushes, I like for this character specifically, um, I want the feather to kind of lay on this cloth mesh and ooh, super close. And I hit solo for this. So I want it to lay on this mesh and we'll make sure that it, it has the ro right ro rotation to do so. So usually the base of whatever you want to insert the mesh from, the base should always be pointing away from you. And whatever you want to fall out or flow out, it would be pointing towards you. So since that's the case, I'm going to put the base of the feather towards the back. Um, I'm going to angle it up a bit so that it lays a little bit more at an angle kind of like that. And I'm going to go ahead and create an insert mesh brush, which is right here in brush. And I'll just go ahead and do that, make a brand new one. And to also see that the texture is working, you can kind of see it in the brush preview, even though it's very light. Um, this just means that your insert mesh brush is now in your brush palette. Um, if you make a good brush, make sure you save it out as a separate brush because ZBrush, if you reload it, it will delete. Uh, so now I have a feather insert mesh brush. Um, and a way to test it, you can go ahead and load a another thing, another sphere, and draw it on. And when you draw it on, you'll notice, oh, two things, first of all. Uh, the texture is not on it, and that is because uh, for ZBrush, you actually have to turn back on this new from Polypaint so that it can remember that information. Uh, one thing to note is when I press it, it will throw it onto your selected mesh that you are inserting the feather on. Um, that mesh has to have UVs, uh, which is very important, but you also notice that I don't really want this texture on this mesh. Um, so probably when I'm, I would use a kind of like a deke or a decoy, I guess, mesh that I will draw everything on 
and then by at the end of it I will delete that mesh so that I only have the feathers um, and uh, the other second issue is you notice how the feathers kind of come off of the mesh where I want it to actually be on top of the mesh um, that way it looks like it's embedded um, the way to fix that is actually in brush and depth and there is an embed setting so if I want it to be closer to the body surface or the surface I should say um, you can move the embed if you want it to be a little sunken in you can push that and I'm watching this little tiny like target move down um, and that just means that it goes further into the mesh as we can see right here so now it's inserting at the the insert that I want or the surface level that I want all right so now to try to put it on this cape that I want to make I'm going to actually I'm going to append a sphere in because I'm going to go ahead and delete that after I'm done. And that's a important thing because, like I said, it need, that object needs to have UVs on it. So I'm going to go ahead and get that sphere, move it all the way back up. So that's right next to this. So I'm going to solo turn this off. And what I'm going to do is actually shrink this a bit. Reason being is that I can hide inside of this mesh. It doesn't actually have to be visible. Um, but your actual mes mesh that you want to draw on should be visible. This is kind of the trick so that you can insert on a mesh but not keep it. Um, so I know this sphere has UVs, which makes it easier. So if I draw on this cape, I can get the feathers the way that I want it to draw. And I mean, there's going to be some rotation changes that I want because you notice it's all going in one direction. It's based off the normals. Um, since I want to make a flatter one, I can go ahead and go back to my feather mesh brush that I was making it off of. And I'm just going to put it more vertical to the camera so that when it embeds, it'll embed from here, or generally from there. Um, I'm going to go ahead and create an intermesh, and I'm going to actually just append it to my last one. This way, if I want to use both of them, I have both of them. Um, and the way to get to that is by pressing the M key in your intermesh, or the brush that you made. And then you have like the first one you made, and then the second one, and so forth. If you want to make a bunch of different shapes or bold, like I would say, like if you have different types of feathers or different color feathers, you can always make a bunch of them within one brush. And so now you have a multi mesh brush. Um, so uh, I'll go back to that and click the second one I made, and you'll see that it comes out flatter. Um, I also have to change the embedding on that one as you notice, because it is being floating, and now I just pushed it too far. So let's go about right there. And oh, and I just noticed, like, if you, you're going to have this issue, if you pull out and pull in, it's going to skew it. Um, if you want your feathers to be at the same size every time, or uniform size, you can hold shift. Uh, while you drag it. So you drag it out, hold shift, it'll pull, and it should be at the uniform scale. But you notice that it's not pulling at your angle. That is a transpose tool <laughs> issue. So you actually have to uh, draw it, your transpose tool out on top of your surface. Or if you want it to come out vertically, you draw it vertically and then hold shift so that it holds it towards like the y direction, x direction, z direction. So I just want to pull it towards this plane direction. Um, and then go back to my insert mesh brush and go ahead and draw again. And it will draw correctly every time you press shift. So I can draw a bunch of these and press shift and it will draw in that direction. Um, I will play around with the actual placement of all of this. It will get some rotations in and 
fix the angles and everything. Um, but I can place a crap ton of feathers very easily. Um, and so you also notice that there's no texture on it. That's because you have to go do that texture trick again, which is go to your texture map. Ooh, quick save. Um, and hit new from polypaint. Oh, and I crash. So I just crashed. Um, ideally, I think you want to turn on texture before you draw too many uh, feathers, like I said, because you jump into the millions. Um, but luckily, my file quick save right before it happened, and I was able to preserve what I was working on and just easily press new from polypaint, and it turned it right back on. So there you go. That's how you get a bunch of poly painted feathers onto an insert mesh brush.